Y'all, I can't even tell you how much I've enjoyed looking out my kitchen window and seeing this beautiful garden. It just makes my heart swell with pride and joy. Peppers and tomatoes, loving it in the ground. And as you can see, something happened to the lettuce. That's right, chickens. Chickens happened to the lettuce. We only had three chickens get out. Three. And that was after we clipped their wings. But the ones that were the most determined to get out were very eager to sneak through the opening the pigs made. So the pigs let the chickens out and they came right here to the garden and pulled the lettuce out by its roots. <laughs> Thanks chickens. Thanks pigs. My animals are working in conspiracy against me. So we clipped their wings. They found a way out after that because the pigs let them out. So Ryan set up a new protective barrier for the pigs. <laughs> Can't fool us anymore. So there's one thing that really encourages pigs. Something that you can use as a tool to make them go where you want and do what you want most of the time. But sometimes, excuse me, sometimes it can be problematic. It's food. So, pigs, like cows, will do just about anything for food. <laughs> All right, let me break it. So, while this helps us get the pigs to go where we want them to, when we need them to go somewhere, it also can cause some issues when what they want, the food, is on the other side of the fence in with the chickens. So we've been feeding the chickens supplemental food. They've been getting a lot of fresh cut lettuce and lots of other greens and good supplements since we put them up because we want them to still have great nutrition. But the pigs wanted in on that. Even though the pigs got their own, they were still trying to fight their way in to steal it from the chickens. So, the number one thing that deters pigs, electric fence. Give them a zap, shock them. They will learn so fast to stay away. So Ryan has set up two wires along the bottom, all the way around the fencing area. So that anytime the pigs try to get in there, they get zapped. I heard maybe twice the day that we set it up, we heard it about twice that they got zapped. Haven't heard a peep since. They don't even try anymore. They learned their lesson. No more chickens out. Whew, thank goodness. So the pigs get to eat what we give them and leave the chickens alone. Fight over it yourself. Yeah. Mama's been cranky with her food lately. I hope that means she's good. What do y'all think? It's hard to tell. She's always bad, but... Oh, you bringing it to me? You think I'll protect you, Bowser? <laughs> Ducks are like, I'm getting in on that. Yum, yum. I'll pick up all the crumbs you piggies drop. Lashes, you don't get in very luck, huh? You get a few bites. <laughs> Dr. Drake got in on that. You got somebody? <laughs> Letting the baby sheep out for some free range time. Gonna let them eat some of these big clumps of crabgrass. <laughs> the lamb's got the zoomies.
<laughs> oh, they are so cute. <laughs> back and forth, back and forth, running around. And then I go in my shelter because I know that's where I feel safe. And then I come back out and run. <laughs> They saw Liam and they started just running up and down, up and down. Run this way, Liam! Do they chase you? <laughs> oh, that's adorable! You know, a lot of times people say goats are lawnmowers. No! They aren't. Goats don't really eat that much grass. But you want lawnmowers, get you some sheep. These guys will eat your grass. Right down to the ground. <laughs> good morning, chicks. They are doing so good in here. They love it. Where'd your water go? Oh, it's over there. Gotta move it slightly. So I come out and I check their water. Looks like it's empty. Daddy filled it up last night, but we're not up to the size of a one gallon container yet. Oh, sorry, I'm just taking the blanket off so the sunlight can come in. So we haven't upgraded to the one gallon water yet, so we're having to refill the quart twice a day. I am giving the garden a good watering. I watered everything in the day we planted, but it's already drying out, so I let it soak in one time and then I go back over it again. This is whether we get rain coming or not. I do this on new transplants. You don't want them to dry out. And the beauty of having raised beds is that it contains all this moisture right in the root zone. So you don't have to use as much water to water your plants because it's going to be concentrated around the roots where it needs to be. So I get it good and saturated and it drains well because it's a raised bed so I don't have to worry about it sitting soggy. Plus having the mulch under the beds is really helps with the drainage at the bottom of the bed. So this is just the perfect setup to have some very healthy, happy plants. I'm so glad I didn't plant all of our hydroponic lettuce. It's still growing strong and uh, we'll be able to replace any that the chickens killed in the garden with these ones. Y'all, I have so much planting to do. I've got thornless raspberries and grapes and uh i don't know uh, I, I, I don't know i know i know these but i don't know there's labels in here somewhere oh look at that you're blooming this is a cherry i think i saw the label on this one yes a sand cherry sand cherry i'm not really familiar with it it was a gift and then I have some, don't mind the crab, oh, that's not crabgrass. Here I am pulling crabgrass, was mixed in. There we go. Don't mind the crabgrass. I uh, hate that stuff. I've got some perennials here that I need to plant in a flower garden. I've got some figs. I've got some red raspberries that are thornless. Just all kinds of stuff in here. Underneath this frost fabric, I have a ton of other stuff. I've got some dewberries, some pomegranates, some figs, some olives, some citrus. I've even got a coconut over there underneath the tarp, underneath the fabric. I've got some kiwi vine. Just a whole bunch of tropical plants that are waiting to come out. 
some of the tropical plants like the citrus will have to be in the greenhouse in the winter and some will actually be able to plant in the ground in a protected location here in Georgia. So I'm excited to experiment with that borderline planting area of some tropical plants. But I feel like if I do it right and I choose my location wisely, they'll do really well. We used about half of our compost already. What's left on the ground underneath, we'll, we'll just plant stuff right into it. But over here is the real star of the show right now. I am just giddy about this. These are the thornless blackberries we planted from just root cuttings last year. And they are so covered with blooms. I can't even count how many blackberries we're going to be able to eat. It's going to be insane. There's so many flower buds. And there's two rows and they go the whole length of this side of the garden all the way down. And then right at the base of them, there's more of that yucky crabgrass and our strawberries, which are blooming. So the strawberries are kind of planted a little too low. I want to dig them up and raise them up and make this a mounded hill that they grow in because they're, they're not liking being in a ditch. The only reason they were planted in a ditch in the first place is because I had all these little baby strawberry plants and I had no time, no energy, and I just felt like they were gonna die. I had them in a cup of water waiting to plant them and they started to get that rotting plant material smell in the water and I was like, <gasps> I've got to get them in the ground. Ryan, just put your potato plow on and dig me a ditch and I'm gonna drop them in. And that's what I did. So as you can see, even when you don't have time to do it right, if you just get it in the ground, you're gonna have better luck than if you didn't do it in the first place. So this year, I do need to reestablish my strawberry bed a little better, and I've got something else from a friend that's gonna help me do that. So as you know, I always say, if you ever need anything in your local, let me know. I had someone reach out that watches our channel that I've talked to for a couple of years now on Facebook Messenger, and they asked if we had any compost they could get off of us. And they were wanting to buy it and I said no no and they said well I have jars that are out in the yard from the previous person who lived here they're all dirty and such but I saw that you needed some mason jars so I could bring those and I was like yeah I'll wash them up no problem y'all look what she brought all these jars just a ton of them I'm super stoked yes I will clean these all and use them absolutely one of the nice thing about mason jars is they last forever you might have to scrub them clean if they've been out in the yard for a couple of years but they're still good to use and then here is the other surprise she brought me some sweet charlie strawberry plants that she dug up from her strawberry patch ryan was supposed to plant them last night oh goodness but he didn't have time because of the pigs and the electric fence project he had to do, but I'm gonna open up this bag too. I don't want them to suffocate, so as long as these bags are open, they're gonna be okay for a minute. Not long, I won't leave them like this very long, but sometimes you have to leave things sit for a little bit when you don't have time to work on it. I've also got all of these plants over here that need to be planted and put in the ground. <laughs> I've got this Japanese maple, and a curly willow, and another Japanese maple, and a thumbergia that's grown back from the roots. Got some canas, a little bit of everything that needs to get planted. Not to mention a million different varieties of seed in the vegetable garden that I want to get out. I have so much going on here. I am so blessed. And I can't wait for having this experience again. Another growing season. And this time with our wonderful garden beds behind us. I love them. Hello. They're all coming running. Brought the goats some hay and they got excited.
if only I could keep the cats from doing cat things in the garden, that'd be great. But they are not nearly as damaging as the chickens are. What? What do you want? Why is everybody coming to see me? Do you think I got something? They think I got something. They already got it. Look at that pile of fresh lettuce in there for them. These chickens are getting all the food brought to them now. And you guys too, huh? You want me to give you something? You want something? All right, let's see. Let's see what we got from today's compost buckets that Daddy brought. What was that, Lashes? What was that, Lashes? She just let out a beautiful moo. And I missed it. What do you want, Lashes? What do you want, baby girl? Tell mama. What do you want? So, as you can see, Lashes is back in the buck pen. Yep, she figured out how to get out again. So she's in lockdown again. Girly girl, you gotta stop doing that. I don't know how she finds a way to squeeze through the wire wire, but she does. We have gone around and checked, and we just don't know where she's getting out, so it's hard to do any repairs. All right. Just lettuce. Oh, they're going to be so bored. I've had apples and pears to give them. Now they're going to be like, boo, just lettuce. Oh, there is some pears there. Oh, I don't want to get that one. Right there. There's some lettuce. Everybody share. Be nice. Peaches has been a bully lately, especially with food. I think I'm blaming it on pregnancy hormones. I'm hoping that's what it is. She doesn't look as big as she did with her last pregnancy, so I'm kind of questioning if she's even bred, but let's pray. She is going to have babies in three weeks or so. We ended up with 20 beautiful chicks hatched out of the incubator that had some failure. We also had some great success. Super excited to welcome these babies to our farm. Today leaves us two days till the quail hatch, right? Oh, well, what do you know? Quail often hatch earlier than they're supposed to. <laughs> We got one that just hatched. I heard it chirping. I've actually been looking, expecting them to hatch early. And I've got another one that's all the way zippered and quite a few more that are pipping. So exciting. Yes, there is one of my quail eggs in there. <laughs> and the rest are these beautiful Celadon eggs. I am so excited. Can't wait. Oh my goodness, they are hatching like crazy, y'all. And they are all different colors. Got a white one, a red one, a striped one, a brown one. They are just so adorable. Yeah, they're hatching. Oh, there's another one back there. Yep, we're gonna have some very pretty quail that lay very pretty eggs. I'm excited. Take a picture, Sonic.